not afraid of the dark. See, look, I'll flick the switch. See, I'm not afraid. Mommy! Hello, Freedom Guy 55 here again. I had just seen Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. It stars Guy Pierce, Katie Holmes, and Bailey Madison. It also is directed by Troy Nixie, and it's produced by Guillermo del Toro, and also he did the uh, co-writing to the screenplay. Well, it stars a little girl who is just now newly moved in with her father and his new girlfriend. Well, when she's moved into this particular big mansion, some mysterious things are happening in the basement. Now, I really did enjoy this film. I thought this film was the creep... It had some of the most creepiest atmosphere as well that I've seen in any kind of film, even recently. As well as also it had some, you know, the creepiest atmosphere for the scenes, as well as also the creepiest atmosphere for the location or the different particular kind of locations that they had, even including the mansion. I mean, when you walk into this mansion the first time in daylight, you're like looking at this mansion and... If I was there and crossing the threshold, I'd be like, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be at a Holiday Inn. Goodbye. And sometimes I think that that was the big problem with it because um, it only concentrated more on the atmosphere and not really on scaring, like scaring you. There were some scares that were actually pretty good, but yet it just wasn't enough. They were concentrating just more on the atmosphere. So just keep that in mind when you actually see this film. Now, for a horror film, this has some really good acting by Guy Pearce, Katie Holmes, and even Bailey Madison. They're actually just really wonderful in this film. I really enjoyed their kind of like um, deep conviction toward the characters that they were actually playing. It was really well done. I really did enjoy Bailey Madison's character. I thought that, because you're really just following her in this movie, but at the same time, she really did an exceptionally well, uh, exceptionally really good job in being the kind of like scared girl that basically where nobody else believes and such. It was just, it's an, ama it's an amazing effort for her, and I enjoyed it. As for Guy Pearce and Katie Holmes, I actually really did enjoy their acting. They were really well, it's well done for what the characters they were, but I just felt that they really concentrated too much upon their bickering and fighting in this movie and really not upon, you know, their conviction toward each other, the love between each other, that I just probably wanted to see more in this film between the two. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just a hopeless romantic, I guess. Now. Some people might get turned off by the darkness in the film because there are some scenes where it gets really too dark for you not to be able to see, but there are only some scenes. Other scenes I found were just fine being in the dark and they were actually really well done. But it was at the end where some of the scenes were just really too dark and you just really were struggling to see. So, but in the sense of being a movie that's called Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, that kind of makes sense, you know? It's kind of supposed to have that kind of creepiness. Also, I think some people might actually be taken back by some of the typical kind of horror movie conventions, like, you know, a little kid winds up actually seeing something, and then the parents don't believe them, and they call a psychiatrist, you know, like what Child's Play did. Well, I actually wasn't taken back by that, uh, for pretty much a few reasons. And they really surround Guillermo del Toro. Uh, because Guillermo del Toro, uh, this is a movie that is actually based upon a 19... 73 made for TV movie that Guillermo del Toro actually saw when he was young that inspired him to do Pan's Labyrinth and also Devil's Backbone. So I wasn't really taken by that for that reason. I wasn't taken back by it by, for that reason. But also the fact that there was a thing that he said, Guillermo del Toro said in a commentary on Pan's Labyrinth where he wound up saying that you know, children have the most wonderful, beautiful imaginations. And yet, he winds up thinking that adults kind of damage that I imagination. And in some ways, I, I do really believe that that is true. Um, for the good, but also, I think, really for the bad, too. So, in a sense, I wasn't really taken back by this film because I understand Guillermo del Toro and where he's coming from in this movie. So, what would I give this film? 
Uh, well, I did really enjoy it, so it is giving a th it, it is getting a thumbs up. It is a good movie, and it is better than most other horror movies that you've seen out there, at least especially for me. Okay, but uh, I don't. I do think that there are certain particular kind of problems with it that that it doesn't really reach a kind of must see. But it is. I did really find it enjoyable. I did, but I think that it might not be for everybody. So. Just keep that in mind. So I give it a, like a three and a half stars. Thumbs up, three and a half stars. It's recommendable. It's pretty good. It's a solid it, It's a solid horror movie. So, you know, go see it if you want to. Also, the weirdest thing about this film is the fact that it's a children's film that's not really meant for children. It's weird. You know, you got a child in it. You really are convicted toward this child. But at the same time... And the child is the, you know, main character and, you know, you really like it. And yet it's not a children's film. But yet this child actually acts much better than most of the other children's films I've actually seen this summer. So do, you know, keep that in mind. And uh, I guess that's it. And uh, if you want to comment on this film, uh, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you believe in what I say, if you don't, if you don't really, do, if you don't, I, I'd like to know. Just leave a comment or whatnot. And uh, I guess that's all. And I thank you for your time, and have a nice day.